Hello students, welcome to second lecture on design of clutches. In this lecture, we will see the procedure of uh, designing a clutch by taking an example. This is an example. A plate clutch consists of one pair of contacting surfaces. The inner and outer diameters of the friction disc are 100 and 200 mm respectively. The coefficient of friction is 0 0.1 and the permissible intensity of pressure is 1 Newton per millimeter square. Assuming uniform wear theory, calculate the power transmitting capacity of the clutch at 750 rpm. Also calculate the power transmitting capacity of the clutch using uniform pressure theory. Now let us try to solve this. Now by using the uniform pressure theory, we will determine the torque being transmitted and also the power being transmitted by this uh, single plate device. Now what is given here is the outer radius is uh, 100 millimeter, inner radius is 50 millimeter, coefficient of friction is 0 0.1, intensity of pressure is 1 newton per millimeter square and the shaft rotates are at 750 rpm. Now we know that the equation for the uniform pressure theory for the intensity of pressure is P equal to F A divided by pi into R1 square minus R2 square. So P is given as 1 Newton per millimeter square and R1, R2 we know uh, hence determine the axial operating force F A which is 23,565 Newton. Then by using the torque transmitting capacity of the single plate clutch based on uniform theory, the equation for that is 2 by 3 into mu into F A into R1 cube minus R2 cube by R1 square minus R2 square. So by substituting all the values here, what we get is 183.283 Newton meter is the torque that is being transmitted by this single plate. Then the power transmitted based on uniform pressure theory our standard equation for the power transmitted you know P equal to 2 pi mt divided by 16 to 1000 so substituting the value of the torque in this equation in terms of newton meter you get P as 14.40 kilo watt now similarly by using the uniform wear theory we will determine the torque transmitted and also the power transmitted. The equation for torque transmitted by this single plate based on informed wear theory is half into mu into F A into R1 plus R2. So we know all these parameters. Substitute here, you get T as 176.738 Newton meter and by using this torque and substituting that in the power equation, you get power as 13.88 kilowatt. So, just to see, based on the uniform pressure theory, what is the amount of power transmitted, and based on the uniform wear theory, what is the magnitude of the power transmitted. Now, let us look at this second problem. A plate clutch having a single driving plate and contact surfaces on each side is required to transmit 110 kilowatt at 1250 rpm. The outer diameter of the contact surface is to be 300 mm. The coefficient of friction is 0 0.4. Assuming a uniform pressure of 0 0.17 Newton per mm square, determine the inner diameter of the friction surfaces and assuming the same dimensions and same axial thrust determine the maximum power that can be transmitted and the maximum intensity of pressure when uniform wear conditions have been reached. Now, first of all, we will determine the inner diameter of the friction surface using uniform pressure theory. Now, what is given is power to be transmitted is 110 kilowatt, then speed of the shaft is 1250 rpm, then <coughs> the 
of the diameter one of the diameter is 300 mm that is radius is 150 mm coefficient of friction is 0.4 and p is 0.17 newton per mm square then net uh, d2 is the inner diameter of the contact on the friction surface is and r2 the corresponding inner radius of the contact on the friction surface is so we know that by using the power equation p equal to 2 pi d divided by 60 into 1000 we can determine the torque because n is known p is known so hence by substituting the value of p and n we get torque as 840 into 10 to power 3 newton millimeter now for the uniform pressure theory f a is given by p into area that is p into pi into r1 square minus r2 square so hence uh, p is given as 0.17 this is uh, r1 is given so by substituting these value we get uh, f a equation in terms of r2 and also we know that the mean radius of the contact surface for uniform pressure conditions is given by this so this mean radius will also be in terms of r2 now we also know that for the uniform pressure theory torque is uh, torque per cap capacity is given by n into mu into f into r so torque already we have determined substitute that n is 2 there are a pair two surfaces are there that means one pair into coefficient of friction 0.4 fa already we have calculated substitute that the mean radius is also calculated substitute that and after simplifying we get d2 as 100 mm that is inner diameter of the friction surface is 150 mm based on uniform pressure theory remember here the value of n is used as 2 means both sides of the plate or disc are active hence n equal to 2 then second part of the problem where we are required to determine maximum torque transmitted and maximum intensity of pressure assuming uniform wear theory we know that uh, the axial thrust or axial force is given by this equation so already we have calculated this only thing is we have to substitute the value of r2 which has determined from the uniform pressure theory substitute that and you get the value of f a as 9011 newton so in the problem it has been said that you have to use same axial force for this uh, part also and mean radius of the contact surfaces for uniform wear condition is this r1 plus r2 by 2 that's r is 100.15 mm and maximum torque transmitted is given by t equal to n into mu into f into r So after substituting the all the values, we get T equal to 811 newton meter. Now, in order to determine the maximum intensity of pressure by using the uniform wear theory, now for the uniform wear conditions, we know that the product P into R equal to C, a constant. Now, since the intensity of pressure is maximum at the inner radius, means near the axis, hence we can write P max into R2 equal to C, or C equal to P max into 75 newton per millimeter. Now, we know that the axial thrust F A equal to so much so f a is 9011 newton 2 pi c into r1 minus r2 so substitute all the values here so hence we get uh, the maximum pressure 
as 0.255 newton per millimeter square. Now, another problem this is on multi funnel disc clutch or multi plate disc uh, clutch. Here, steel on bronze multi disc clutch is to transmit 4.5 kilowatt at 750 rpm. The inner radius of the contact surface is 40 mm and outer radius of the contact surface is 70 mm. The clutch operates in oil with an expected coefficient of 0.1. The average allowable pressure is 0.35 Newton per mm square. Find number 1 the total number of the steel and bronze discs that are being used in this uh, clutch system. Number 2 the actual axial force required to operate the clutch. Number 3, the actual average pressure and finally the actual maximum pressure. Given R power 4.5 kilowatt, RPM of the driving shaft 750 RPM, R1 and R2 are given the coefficient of friction and average pressure is 0.35 Newton per millimeter square. Now, first of all, we will determine the total number of steel and bronze discs used in this multi-plate clutch. Now, let n be the total number of pairs of contact surfaces. Now, we know this torque equation. Using the torque equation, find out the torque. See here, the value of uh, power is substituted and n is substituted. Now for inform we are mean radius of the contact surfaces. As I mentioned, unless and otherwise stated, what use inform wear theory. So mean radius is 55 mm and axial force required to operate the clutch FA equal to P A V into pi into R1 square minus R2 square. So all the parameters are known, we get FA equal to 36301. Also, we know that the torque transmitting capacity of a multi plate clutch is T equal to N into mu into F into R. Now, we know torque T, N is unknown, mu we know, F A we know, R also we know. So, hence, uh, number of steel and bronze discs to transmit this much of torque are 2.87 so n equal to 2.87 so since the number of pairs of contact surfaces must be even you remember number of contact surfaces must be even therefore we shall use 4 pairs of contact surfaces out of these 3 will be of steel and 2 will be of broad disc because the number of pairs of contact surface is 1 less than the total number of discs. So, this is 5, okay, minus 1 means you will get 4. So, you know, you will see n1 plus n2 minus 1, 3 plus 2 minus 1 is equal to 4. Now, after having determined the total number of uh, uh, pairs in this multiplane clutch will decide the actual axial force required. Now let FA dash be the actual axial force required. Okay. So now because these are the number of uh, plates we are using, for this these many number of plates, what is the actual force required? Now, since the actual number of pairs of contact surface is 4, therefore actual torque developed by the clutch for one pair of the contact surface is total torque divided by number of pairs 57,304 equal to 14,325 Newton per millimeter per pair. So, this is T dash is the torque transmitted by one pair of uh, contact surfaces. Now, we know that torque developed for one pair of contact surfaces is so much here you see you are not using N here for one pair. 
Okay. So by substituting the values here, f y dash will get as uh, 2604.5 Newton. So this should be f y dash, not w dash, f y dash. Now, after having calculated the actual axial force F dash, we will calculate actual average pressure for four pairs of friction surfaces. Now, let P max be the actual maximum pressure. We know that for uniform wear conditions, the product P and to R equal to C. Since the intensity of pressure is maximum at the inner radius, hence P max into R equal to C. So, C equal to 40 into P max because R2 is 40 millimeter. We know that the actual axial force F radius is equal to 2 pi into C into R1 minus R2. So <coughs> by substituting the values here, we get P max as 0.345 Newton per millimeter square. Students, you may ask why we are using actual average pressure and uh, in the previous slide actual axial force required because these are based on these many numbers of pairs of contact surfaces. Okay, so that is the end of the part two. See you in the other lecture. Thank you.